Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Rob Stoltz and I'm with Citus Health. I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. And we're going to start talking about uh, the $40 billion wound care problem. And we're going to start off, uh, Citus Health is utilized by a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And our virtual customer support platform is, you know, provides that kind of flexibility. And today we're going to be spending time talking with one of our very innovative care providers, Corstrata. And so on behalf of Citus Health and our partner, Corstrata, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. Before I get started, just want a couple of uh, quick housekeeping items. If you have questions during the webinar, please type them into the Q&A window and then send to all panelists. So if we have time at the end, we will answer as many QA questions as we can. If we can't, we'll follow up with them accordingly. Okay. Also note that we're gonna to record today's webinar and we'll make that available to all of the attendees as well. Right. So the objective of the webinar today is to address the challenges with remote wound and ostomy care and offer the proven solutions that improve outcomes and lower the cost for home-based care organizations. To do that, I've got some panelists with me who are great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and uh, introduce those. So we have Sharon Jones, the president and CEO of South Coast Visiting Nurse Association. Sharon has served as president and CEO of South Coast, South Coast Visiting Nurse Association for the past 10 years and has over 35 years experience in home care, hospice and private duty industry. She has held industry board positions with the Visiting Nurse Association of America, and the Ohio Council for Home Care and Hospice and advisory positions with NOC and CMS. We also have Joe Everwine joining us. He is the CFO and co-founder of Corstrata. Joe has over 30 years of experience with the post-acute home health and hospice industry. He's been developing strategies for emerging value-based reimbursement models in healthcare, including the successful integration of telehealth um, into the home care operations, as well as other innovative care models resulting in improved clinical quality and outcomes at a lower cost. And I am Rob Stoltz, as stated, the VP of Business Development here at Citus Health. I've been in this industry for over 25 years now, working with providers to implement technologies to help increase operational efficiencies and improve workflows. So really excited to be with you today. And now that we've kind of introduced our team here, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and get started into some Q&A, okay? So as we get started, you know, we're gonna talk about, as we talked about some of the challenges, uh, maybe Sharon, you can start us off and, and kind of illustrate for us what some of the biggest challenges that home health and hospice organizations are facing today when it comes to wound and ostomy care. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for the opportunity to talk about what South Coast VNA is doing to address the um, wound management program or problem. Um, as far as challenges, I think our biggest challenge has been resources in regard to having um, certified wound and ostomy nurses because we know we need that level of expertise and we've just not been successful with finding that in our area. And I think for those agencies that are fortunate enough to have ostomy nurses or certified wound nurses in their area, it can be quite expensive um, for agencies. So one of the challenges is the cost to doing that. And we actually looked at employing those uh, resources ourselves, but it becomes a logistical issue as it relates to productivity, efficiency, because we service a pretty broad area. And to have one or two ostomy nurses trying to service for us, it's about 500, 600 patients is our average daily census for uh, primary wound diagnosis patients. That can be a real, um, a real challenge. And then lastly, I think just the wounds themselves are very high cost. And so that's a challenge for agencies. And while the reimbursement has certainly improved under some of the newer payment models, it's still very costly for agencies. So it's critical to be able to balance what you're getting in reimbursement with what your costs are for um, managing those wounds. And, and lastly, I would just say the other challenge that we identified was really trying to maintain the level of knowledge um, with our staff. 
because wound products are constantly changing and trying to keep them abreast of those changes uh, has been a challenge for us. That, that all makes sense. And uh, Joe, you know, I wish I had a nickel for every time we started off as staffing and resources uh, as a problem, but it's uh, even with those kinds of specific skills, the, the kinds of things that, that Sharon is seeing in her organization, um, you have a little bit broader view across the country. So interested on your thoughts on that as well. Yes, um, Sharon's spot on. Um, we're seeing that really across the country, as you said. Um, what's really interesting is that currently only 10% of board certified wound and ostomy nurses practice in the post-acute space. So you have this real cluster of specialists concentrated in acute care hospitals as well as outpatient wound centers. So really where, you know, where the patients are, there's really a desert of care. Um, so, and even the ones who, as Sharon alluded to, do have a WOC nurse on staff, oftentimes because of large geographies or multiple branches across states, those resources are really not used very efficiently or effectively. And then coupling it, if they're not utilizing technology, it really becomes more of a cost drain than, than really an efficient producer. Some of the things that we see um, as barriers in home health, and again, it goes to kind of that lack of expertise, but we see a lot of misidentification of etiology of wounds, which obviously has a lot of different effects, not only the care plan, but certainly in the OASIS assessment for accuracy. Um, we see a lot of misstaging of pressure injuries as well, which can, again, lead to an improper care plan, but also, you know, agencies could be dinged for provider-required pressure injuries if, if the staging is not, not done appropriately at start of care. And as Sharon said, really lack of education around advanced dressings um, that do, you know, allow for less visits as well as improved healing times. Um, in hospice specifically, there's a real lack of education around complex, unavoidable wounds at life's end. Um, and so there's some real vulnerability for agencies. Yeah, look, I mean, there's, there's enough challenges to go around then, right, from the staffing and then the, and, uh, you know, some of the things you talked about are leading to the education parts that Sharon talked about as well, right? So Sharon, you, you have all of these kind of pain points out in front of you. And so maybe you can talk about operationally, like what pain does that end? And then how are, how are organizations like yours then trying to address it? Well, I think for us, after doing a complete assessment, looking at what the challenges were, the pros and the cons, we decided to partner with Corstrata. <laughs> um, and that's really addressed um, a, lot of, a lot of our issues. So we've made that investment into that you know, relationship and, and collaboration, which I know we'll talk about a little bit more um, later in the program. But we also invested in staff training and education. And while the goal was not to have our staff be expert, because obviously we're looking to the you know, WOCNs and, and others for that expertise, but to really have a better understanding of wounds, the etiology, what the various treatments were. So we did invest in, in some training and fortunately Corstrata was able to help us with that. We also looked at uh, data collection and analysis because we wanted to have a better understanding of what those patients actually looked like, what types of wounds, how many wounds were there, um, you know, what types of treatments were being ordered, how many were being ordered for daily dressings, those kinds of things. And then we also invested uh, to try and help us uh, address this issue in wound care products. And so that was something that we really felt, while in some cases, some of those products may have been more expensive than what we initially had on our formulary, in the long run, they would be more cost-effective. So we did um, invest in, in that upfront. 
And then lastly, we established standards for wound management to provide some consistency and standardization in just how we were managing wounds. So for example, we developed standardized wound assessment forms and built those into our electronic medical record system. We established standards for measurements and what the frequency would be, how uh, often the RN would visit those patients, what the number of different nurses um, were that, you know, we set a goal to only have so many nurses visiting patients, again, to have that continuity to get a sense of whether this wound was healing or not. So a lot of those, you know, initiatives were done directly in support of addressing the challenges that, that we've identified. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, you covered a lot of ground there, but Joe, can you add on to some of the things that you guys see as pain points and, and different ways um, that that organizations like Sharon's are trying to address them across the country? Yes. Um, you know, one of the things I think is important to point out is that Sharon and her team um, are very metrics driven. So they knew their data. Um, and so, you know, when it came down to, to the real decision of, do we try to build this internally? or do we uh, outsource, th outsource this or, or really right source this um, mm -hmm. to, to a partner, I think it became apparent that that, that that was a good decision and could produce a return on investment uh, for South Coast. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people went into 2020, obviously we didn't know what was coming, but 2020 was to be the year of, of wounds from the standpoint of PDGM and increased reimbursement. And so a lot of people were very opportunistic about finally having the dollars to care for these wound patients that are high resource utilizers. Um, what, what really didn't happen in a lot of cases though is uh, care processes, care delivery was not redesigned. So you were really just repeating the same and the same is not always good. Um, you know, the days of daily dressing changes uh, the days of wet to dry dressing orders, they're really not evidence-based. And so they produce a higher cost, uh, less optimal clinical outcomes, and really just are, are pretty problematic. So from the standpoint of, as Sharon said, looking at formulary, optimizing formulary by wound type, um, regardless of the distributor, those are, those are key strategies. Obviously, for, for us, it is implementing the technology. So it's putting technology in the hands of the bedside clinician, whether that be an RN or an LPN, who is delivering the wound care to be able to gather that objective data, as Sharon uh, alluded to. So, so Joe, it's interesting to go back to something you said at the beginning of your conversation is, uh, you know, a buy versus build decision. Right. So can you talk to us a little bit about that decision process that you see and, you know, why organizations uh, would consider kind of the remote wound care versus, you know, in that decision, why they're going to do the buy versus the build? Right. Yeah, it's really uh, it's an analysis that we help uh, agencies walk through. Um, a lot of times, as Sharon alluded to, those resources, those clinical specialists are hard to come by um, and really hard to retain as well. Because if you're trying to hire a full-time wound specialist and your wound um, census fluctuates, you might not be able to really keep them engaged with wound patients, which is all we all know that's where their passion lies. So, um, you know, interestingly in home health and hospice, one out of every three patients, national statistics show that, that one, one out of three patients has a wound. Um, it's one of the highest uh, visits per 30 day episode. Um, you know, so really in the bill versus buy, you're looking at resource utilization, you're looking at staffing, you're looking at competencies of the staff to be able to adequately identify etiology stage correctly. And that's where really utilizing um, outsourced or right sourced remote management can come into play. Um, think of, you know, one of the things that we like to kind of compare it to is the teleradiology model. Um, you have all of these providers who really can't afford 
or have access to hiring a full-time radiologist. But if you're able to apply technology to the problem and create a distributed work model where you're really sending radiological images to radiologists to read them, send them back to the provider, it's really a very efficient use of, of technology. We've applied those similar principles to wound and ostomy care. So we, Corstrata has a distributed model of certified wound specialists that we're able to use very efficiently in moving those images or video too. Um, so I hope that answered that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Sharon, I've, I've got to assume in that process, right, you, that you went through in this build versus buy, some of those things that you talked about earlier on staffing and ongoing education came into play, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think Joe's right on in terms of the, the statistics, because we're right in line with that. As I said earlier, a third of our average daily um, census are wound, primary wound um, patients. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And, and Joe, I, I would assume, go back to another point you made, uh, you kind of briefly hit on it, but, you know, that, that maybe in, in your world, you're leveraging some different technology or technology differently. Uh, in that type of organization. Can you talk a little bit about how leveraging that kind of tech enablement uh, benefits you in helping helping organizations solve the problem? Sure. Yeah, I think um, since we formed Corstrata a little over five years ago, we've seen um, a proliferation of wound imaging applications um, that, that, are, that have come into the market. And basically that technology allows for the clinician at the bedside to photograph the wound. Um, doc, and, and that photography is important because um, these mobile applications um, now take out the, uh, the subjective um, aspect of wound measurement. Now these applications allow for auto measurement of the wound. So length, width, area, all of the things that sometimes um, clinicians in post-acute struggled with um, how to get consistent measurements. Uh, the guesswork of that is, has been taken out of the equation. So that's important from a number of standpoints because you get consistent images from visit to visit, but then you're also getting, like Sharon said, that objective data. So we are able to see how is that wound progressing over time? What are the measurements? Is it moving toward closure? Um, what are the aspects of the wound as far as, you know, necrotic tissue or slough or any of the things that affect um, wound healing? And so not only is Sharon's team able to see that data, but then the Corsarada remote wound specialists can monitor that over time and make timely interventions in the care. So some of these, just for instance, some of these wounds that have literally been you know, research after research after research, um, lower extremity venous wounds. Um, if we're able to intervene with an evidence-based care plan, we can move that wound toward closure in a much faster period at a, at a lot less cost as well. So the technology is really the enabler to create that access uh, between the agency, the home health agency, the hospice, and Corstrata is board certified wound care clinicians. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, those are technologies that sometimes we don't see at, at agency organizations, right? So um, that, that's an important enabling factor for uh, the efficiency of staff as well. So, um, you know, what they're sharing, I'm interested in, you know, Joe kind of talked about the technology they're using, but can you talk a little bit about what's the process for remote wound care from your staffing position and your organization's uh, perspective. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, from an operating standpoint, one of the things that we identified early on was the need or the desire to identify these patients right away. So at point of intake, we kind of have a parallel track, if you will, um, for identifying the patients. But at point of intake, our intake nurses, based on some criteria that we developed internally, which is pretty broad, um, but it helps them to identify right up front when that referral comes over. So if they're missing any information, such as the wound etiology, they can 
get to the referral source or go through the chart um, if it's a patient that's within our, our system and get all that, gather all that information um, right up front. At the same time, our start of care um, nurses are able to identify patients who meet the criteria as well, because we've built in an assessment uh, trigger that we call it. So if the patient presents with these certain criteria, the clinicians get an alert that says, have you considered a wound care consult? So right from the beginning, we're identifying um, those patients up front. And then from there, the process starts, um, as Joe described, in terms of the photos being taken, and then within a 24 hour turnaround, and if it needs to be sooner than that, we certainly um, work with Costrada's team to get that recommendation sooner. But within that 24 hour period, we actually get an assessment and a recommendation from the Costrada uh, wound care nurse in terms of whether or not, you know, they are in agreement with what's been ordered. They make recommendations as to what, you know, might need to be different in terms of the dress change. And then from there, that gets communicated to the physician. And in most cases, I can say the physicians are very appreciative of, of getting that. And one of the things we've done here um, at VNA is in terms of our model from an operating standpoint is once that uh, start of care nurse sets up the wound consult, it's then handed off to their partner LPN. We, we have a, a model that we call our tripod and so are pods and there's an RN assigned to um, an LPN and they work together. So it gets handed off because I think as we've discussed, wound care is very expensive. And so we try to use the lower cost uh, discipline and in this case, the LPN versus the RN and they work hand in hand together. So we've done a lot of education with our LPNs, um, and they pretty much manage those wounds with the RN providing that oversight um, in either the RN or LPN on a weekly basis uh, updates the physician as to what the uh, status is of that wound. And that, that model has worked out very well. So it's interesting. I mean, you mentioned the tripod. I mean, Joe, is your group kind of the fourth leg of the stool then at that point? I mean, they... Uh... <laughs> you know, really then leaning on, on you guys as part of that next communication piece and, and for the timeliness of that data? Yes. And um, so really supporting Sharon's team in, in not only the kind of the decisions around evidence-based care plans, but then also helping monitor the, the progress. You know, a couple of things I think that are of note uh, or extremely noteworthy um, We've we've always kind of held South Coast VNA out as one of our exemplar clients because of the fact that they do utilize all of their resources very uh, effectively. So, for instance, in this LPN model, it's just been amazing to watch um, the the use of LPNs in delivering wound care and um, how gratifying it is. I think for them to feel you know, very extremely important in that process. And um, really, uh, you know, anecdotally, we've heard some say, gosh, I feel so much more confident um, in being able to deliver wound care and, and really see results with the patient. So it's, it's a great model. One other thing that came to mind as Sharon was talking, because we have the data from uh, the wound imaging software, we are able to see the progression of that image and the progression of the wound over time. And that becomes extremely uh, valuable to the agency in communicating to the referral sources. As Sharon said, the physicians often are very appreciative of, of having that uh, level of expertise in, in delivering the care. And we're able to produce reports back to the referral sources that show this is the this is the image of the wound at admission. This is the image of the wound after X amount of time. This is a percentage of closure. And so it, it provides incredibly important information back to referral sources as well. You know, I think um, one of the things that's been the core, right, is I've heard both of you talk about data at this point. And I know, Sharon, that 
you, you haven't you haven't had it long enough to get data that you're comfortable with. But I know that coming into this, if you're doing the buy build analysis and it's focused, you are in data. You have some expectations uh, and some things that you've probably seen anecdotally. So I'm kind of interested. You know, until you gather enough data, anecdotally, what kind of benefits since you've started doing this, uh, you know, are you seeing at this organization? Okay. Yeah. And actually, I, I just want to echo um, what Joe just said um, about the collaboration and, and reporting back to the physician, because one of the things that we've seen from more of a qualitative standpoint is the improved communication with our physicians, the communication and collaboration. And I think for those of us who've been in home care a long time, you know, sometimes the physicians <laughs> get very <laughs> agitated with the nurses calling them and they say, I met with physicians and they're like, you know, they they call me and I'm not sure what they're saying. I'm not clear on what they're asking me for, et cetera, et cetera. And this has really helped. I've had a lot of positive uh, feedback from our physicians um, when our staff call um, and, and they're appreciative of it. And so in addition to um, that, we actually have a couple of metrics that we have seen some um, improvement um, on. And one of them is the length of stay, which I was a little bit surprised um, in terms of what our length of stay was initially. And we've made some progress, <laughs> some significant progress, but our most recent data shows that we went from uh, a length of stay or the number of days on um, service uh, from 67 days down to 55 days as of uh, the data from April. So I thought that was um, pretty significant. Yeah, um, the, uh, one of the, our other metrics that we're tracking is our skilled nurse visits. And as you said, we haven't um, been monitoring that long enough to definitively say that we've reduced it as a result of this collaboration, but we have seen it go down um, some with our wound patients. What I've also seen is the uh, reduction in the number of daily uh, patients as well as BID, because when we first started this process, we had a lot of dailies and, and normal salines and, you know, wet to dry and BIDs. And we've seen that um, those changes um, occur. And then we're also monitoring our supply costs. And again, we expect that those will go down. It's a little bit hard to gauge it right now because we did make a change uh, prior to uh, working with uh, Corstrata and had gotten some savings there. And when we revised our formulary, as I said earlier, some of the products were more expensive, but we, we believe that that is um, going down as well. And then I mentioned uh, earlier the uh, number of clinicians that are seeing the patient has gone down. When we first started monitoring this, we were averaging seven to eight different clinicians. And this was Monday through Friday. We took the weekends out because we know you're going to see different people on the weekend. And we're now down to about three to four um, based on that model, that pod model that, that I shared. And I think that's important for the continuity in assessing the, the wound healing to make sure that, you know, the, the fewest number of clinicians are seeing that patient. So we've definitely seen some um, improvements, uh, both qualitative and quantitative in terms of our, our metrics. Yeah, that's substantial. I know, um, I, I don't think when we talked the first time, I thought uh, I mean, that's quite a bit of data you have for a short run on this. So that's really, um, those are great results. So kudos to you and uh, of course, Charlotte both for working together to kind of pull those, that information together so quickly. Um, look, Joe, I mean, uh, obviously when you get, have data, and we've heard you talk a little bit already about some of the technology um, that's there. Uh, you know, I, you mentioned uh, kind of the wound capture. You're right. I mean, that's been a variance over time, the size of the wounds and so forth. So can you elaborate a bit on what kinds of technologies, kind of emerging things that you guys have seen, taken advantage of, continue to look at, continue to try to leverage to, uh, can, you know, to gain that efficiency all the time? Sure. So Obviously, at the core of our model is uh, the fact that we've got to really be um, agile in being able to get um, access to the to the wound specialist, to the WOC nurses. So, um, because of that laser focus, we have to really be laser focused on creating access. 
um, to that model. So a lot of technologies are kind of behind the scenes. Obviously, one extremely important one um, is when we chose Citus as kind of the engine for um, behind the scenes, moving the data, being able to facilitate the data capture in the mo mobile wound imaging, and then create the platform by which our nurses access that, that data. Um, what was really important to us also was the ability to uh, initiate HIPAA compliant live video. That's proven to be extremely effective for us, not only in dealing with our customers, clinicians at the bedside. So imagine troubleshooting negative pressure devices or uh, guiding um, a, a bedside clinician on choices around ostomy appliances and really seeing kind of a holistic view of the patient in their home environment uh, when it comes to, to ostomy care. That's, that's been extremely valuable. Um, so again, uh, that's that's been incredibly important. Um, you know, the ability to have uh, again that communication flow between the nurses, not only our team but also to uh, teams such as Sharon's um, advancements advancements and being able to communicate directly with the patient and caregiver. Um, we have a couple of models where we deal directly with the patient, so. It's important from a technology standpoint to be able to uh, make it as easy as possible for everyone to access technology. So for instance, um, with Citus, it's ability to use Atlas, uh, Atlas technology, which uh, Rob, I'd love for you to collaborate, but on that piece of it, um, but also, you know, the ability to customize our own forms for data collection, we have a diabetic foot ulcer prevention program. We're able to disseminate surveys to our patients about, you know, it, both from an education standpoint, but also a data gathering standpoint and very do that very seamlessly for, for information flow. So it's creating that agile open architecture, which has been critical for us. Yeah, that's interesting. So um, just to kind of, add on to the one point that you asked me to expand on there with the Atlas. So Atlas technology is um, making use of, I mean, one of the things that is out there all the time is, hey, can you download an app or can you get to a portal so that I can communicate with you, right? Um, more and more uh, where we're driving technology is how do we eliminate the barriers uh, to engaging with that patient, because you said in some of your models, you have patient direct, right? And so we see this both in your model and in organizations like Sharon's that we work with, where you want to communicate directly with the patient or the caregiver, but, and, and maybe it's something because you have a document to sign, right, for them, or maybe it's something where you're just asking them about the status of, of um, their health at this point in time. But you don't want to go through the whole way. You've got to download this and you've got to now log into this and have a portal. And so Atlas is a way, it's just a technological advance um, that allows you to just simply send. The, the recipient doesn't have to register for anything. They just simply uh, receive a notification with secure links in them that then brings them in and allows them to answer the questions that you need to get on their condition. And then to bring that data back in, both of you have talked about data so much, right? It's to bring that data back in as well. Um, whenever you're talking about, uh, can, I, can I now see and have the patient report on their status in an easy way like Atlas and then act on the data that's coming back as a result of that. So, uh, and I'm not sure if you've seen that or not, Joe, but with, you know, the Atlas, the whole intent is to break down those barriers and engage people that that don't have that interest where they say, anyone who's ever tried to get physicians involved, you know, they, they want you to go through, they don't want to get a portal or they don't want to get an app. And so that, that's really what the intent is. And um, I, I believe that's probably how you're using it as well, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's interesting also, um, you talk about advancing technologies and some of the things that we're constantly looking at are um, advancements in, in wound, both technologies, but also the ability to really monitor patients. So there are some really, really interesting things on the horizon as far as smart dressings that can actually detect 
infection in the wound bed. Um, there's molecular testing of the wound bed, uh, DNA molecular testing for topical precision antibiotics. Um, there are sensors that are being built in so that when you apply compression, you know the amount of pressure that's being uh, provided. So we're we're kind of always on that one, looking for that technology that would allow for um, optimal healing times, but also the ability, for instance, like for Sharon and her team to really have that incoming data ar around the wound healing. And, and imagine, you know, um, a day when we could actually monitor that wound with the patient um, in between visits to perhaps even, even um, facilitate less visits in the home, really optimize care. So really cool things on the horizon. So Sharon, to pull our heads out of the tech cloud for a second, right? Um, there's uh, <laughs> people that, that get involved with that, but I, you know, some of the technologies available out there, but it, it, it seems to me that the things that, you know, while we sit here and talk about tech, the things that you have talked about have been more about uh, the processes, mm -hmm. right? And maybe some of the expertise, maybe you can talk about how those two things blend a little bit and how you have to balance those uh, with each other because it's not like everybody can just grab a tech stack and, and, and make it useful. Exactly. I, I think there's definitely a marriage um, there between the two. And, and I think for us overall, um, and I would think for any home health agency, you want a seamless process. And that's what we found in, in working with Corstrata. So we don't have to be concerned about the technology, um, but knowing that that support is, is there. And so from an operational standpoint, you know, they've been very uh, good with training our staff on exactly where to put the dot. I actually sat in on one of the more recent training classes and I was very surprised um, at, how um, targeted and specific, you know, that that uh, photo uh, capture is. And if it's not exactly in the right place, you, you know, you don't get a, a good picture and, and all those things. So I think having technology that is very user friendly, you know, easy to use um, that the staff can embrace, because while some of our staff love technology, there are others that just, you know, get very nervous, frustrated, mm -hmm. etc. So we want to make sure that, you know, whoever we're working with and, and providing the technology for us, it, it's a seamless process. And it's something that's not going to add, you know, stress and, and anxiety um, to our staff. So when you when you are doing that to that degree, right? I mean, there's obviously a lot of technology involved in different players, but as you're working with organizations like Sharon, you, you, how, how do you balance that out? Like, what's your approach to the the technology, the, the technology leading versus the process, et cetera? Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, um, in in a previous life, when our agency implemented remote patient monitoring. For instance, there was a real pushback to that. A lot of our nurses felt like we were losing kind of high touch um, for high tech. And, and so we got a lot of pushback. Um, and, and in the end, the technology is, is just a tool, right? If, if a remote patient monitoring device sits on a shelf, it's not really doing anybody any good. Um, where we turned the corner with that was when clinicians started seeing the clinical benefits. So they saw that a patient who was going into CHF, for instance, um, that we got that vital and we were able to do a PRN visit to really intervene. Similarly, with, um, with the wound imaging, the, the, real, um, the real engagement and the real adoption is when clinicians in the field all of a sudden see that these new uh, recommendations, new consultations around advanced dressings or education on proper use of compression for lower extremity wounds. When they start seeing the wound heal, um, that's when we really see the engagement and adoption uh, go up pretty dramatically. I, I love what one of Sharon's nurses said in some focus groups that we did 
uh, she said, if you can use an ATM, you can use this software. <laughs> and that was, um, that was powerful for us because that meant that the technology, although it can be somewhat, you know, it's, it's change and it's change management, that ultimately it was a tool that facilitated care. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess, you know, man, my, my wife could use the heck out of that software then. Uh, the ATM <laughs> transactions are a good indicator. <laughs> so, <No doubt. laughs> hey, Joe, I, I know that um, we've, I'm going to jump back to Sharon in a second, but maybe your commentary, because Sharon probably won't brag on herself a little bit about this, but as any technology goes, right, you can take the same technology and deploy it in different places. And, and kind of not get the same results, right? Um, can you talk a little bit about organizations that, that you know, do such a nice job with it, like Sharon's and what it is that they do differently and the approach that they take that's different than maybe organizations you see not as much so? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think you bring out a really important point, Robin, that is really leadership sets the tone for any kind of change management. And I think Sharon does an excellent job and she's got an amazing team of clinical leadership as well um, that really have adopted um, this change and, and this new way of thinking kind of outside of the box when it comes to wound care. So um, yeah, I mean, I think it really does require committed leaders uh, to manage the change and to be able to iterate really I mean, we, when we started out, um, we, we had some kind of defined processes. We, we had some strong kind of inclusion, exclusion criteria for what patients would uh, be consulted on by Corstrata. And then as we started looking at data, we tweaked it. We, we are constantly learning. We're constantly tweaking the model. Um, we're doing a lot of things around formulary and streamlining. And as Sharon said, um, we're seeing some results in, in lower cost per patient. So the other thing is just the whole commitment toward uh, data and toward really having those uh, key performance indicators that show value. And we're committed with Sharon's team to producing those. Um, so yeah, I'll, I will brag on South Coast. It's, it's yeah. a great, great team to work with. <laughs> well, well, Sharon, go ahead, Sharon. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, going back to um, the point that Joe had made in terms of what one of our staff commented about the ease of, of use of, of their um, technology. It's interesting because, as Joe said, we've really evolved um, the program. But when we first started, we did not include any of the RNs. And they actually, because they started hearing about it and the technology and people were using their phones. And so they actually were a little bit upset with me <laughs> because they also <laughs> wanted to be included. And so we just did a whole training, even though not all of them are going to be uh, following the patients. We did an entire uh, training for all of the RN staff because they felt left out and, and really you know, feel empowered now that they also are a part of this and can use the technology. So that's interesting because I was just going to say, like, look, when you do that, you deploy and what, what's, and, and I'll still kind of follow up with this, the initial reaction, like now, but how about when you started and said you were going to do this, what's the initial reaction, um, you know, to it? And was that an easy thing to manage or did you have to, to, you know, go after like that small group that's always on the front end or were you able to deploy it a little bit more broadly to get by? Um, well, I will tell you, I got questions like, we know how to do this. Why are we going to an outside company to help us do this? And so, you know, I had to be respectful of their knowledge and expertise, but at the same time, you know, provide information to them to, to get them to see that things are changing and, you know, some of the advanced wound care products, we just don't have the expertise to, you know, keep up with um, some of those things. And it's interesting because we actually had one certified uh, wound care nurse on staff. And um, it was very difficult because that individual had kind of um, acted in that role of the consultant prior to us contracting with Corstrata. So 
Um, at one point, there was some undermining going on with him saying, you don't need them, just call me, you know, continue to call me um, when you have a patient that needs a wound consult. And so, you know, over a period of time with educating them and with working with Joe's team, we, we got past that. But initially, there was resistance and pushback because the staff took it as an affront that they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so Joe, your team obviously knows that, right? And so the other interesting part of it to me is, um, you know, how, how you kind of blend this? Because the, the, for the people who say, like Sharon said, hey, we can do this, we know how to do this. But, but it's really this kind of combination of stuff, right? I mean, Citus is used as a technology platform for a lot of different things in communication with patient and family and physician orders and all sorts of things. There's people who can go out and they can buy wound image capture software. Right. But it, it, it's, the, the, you know, can you talk a little bit in the complication of orchestrating those things and why it's not just, hey, this isn't a this isn't a statement on a deficiency of somebody. This is the result of this collaboration and focus of bringing a lot of this together. Yes. And, and it has definitely, as Sharon said, been an evolutionary process. Um, one of the things that we've learned from working with Sharon and her team as well as a couple of other uh, clients is, um, one of the things we had to look at internally at Corstrata was, how can we really put uh, a human in with the branding of Corstrata so that, for instance, a nurse on Sharon's team uh, doesn't feel that it's just this entity out there that is spitting back a consult. This is a, a live person, a seasoned, well-trained nurse. And so what we started doing was let's just do, do some things the old fashioned way. Let's pick up the phone and actually have a conversation, even a two minute conversation with one of our nurses and with one of Sharon's team, that all of a sudden makes it real that this, this is a person, you know, this is a real live human on the other end of this process. And a lot of times what we say is we want uh, the customer's team to feel like Corstrata is at the, the interdisciplinary team meeting with them. They're actually a part of the team as if you had a WSCM live and in person, they just happen to be virtual. So that, that barrier, that was a real key learning for us. And now we are really focused on that relationship. You know, again, like I said, picking up a phone and have, having a conversation with one of our nurses, Alicia, Myra, Katie, Holly, it makes it real that, that this is a person on the other end. So th th that was a real key learning for us um, in this process. Yeah, I think maybe through the last year, the other key learning is we can actually still have um, remote people and have relationships with them, right? So right. Uh, maybe we all learned that going through 2020 a little bit up till now, but um, sure, and I, you know, there's a lot of different changes that are going on that we hear about a sniff at home and hospital at home and all these programs that, that are emerging. Can you, can you, does it make you feel like, hey, now that we've kind of got this in place, does it benefit you, do you feel, or how does that kind of play into these emerging things, knowing that this kind of area, which, which tends to be key, is, is kind of uh, something you've, you've found a way to solve? Yeah, I, I think certainly we were already on that track, but certainly post-COVID um, has accelerated it in terms of the recognition and value and all those things that, you know, home health brings um, to the table. And so when I look at what those new models are, it really is, I think, forcing home health agencies to expand their capabilities to be able to manage very acute patients. And we know wound patients are very high cost uh, patients, not just for home care, but on the um, inpatient side as well, um, the payer side. So that's a population that everybody would, you know, uh, be happy to see the cost reduced. So I think, um, you know, in order to be responsive to those new models, which essentially just, you know, um, provide for home health to be able to, as I said, provide more acute uh, services in the home. 
we have to uh, look at partnering because we can't do it all ourselves. And, and there's no reason to have to do it all ourselves because I think there are enough organizations out there, just like we evolved from you know doing internal coding, many of us now outsource that service because it became a specialty several years ago. Um, you really had to be expert in coding and Oasis and all that. And so we outsourced that service or right sourced that service as Joe likes to say. <laughs> and so I think we're seeing that start to happen in other areas, moon management being one of those. Yeah, really interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's probably a great analogy as to what's happened in coding, right, over the years. Uh, the, the, the industry itself, and I think the world in general is, is getting more into specialty. Uh, rather than less. And so uh, that seems to make sense. Joe, anything you want to add on to uh, that component and what you guys are seeing on that front for those types of programs? Yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing a, a whole lot of movement in the hospital at home, sniff at home arena. And one of the things that I think is really important is that home health hosp hospice, you know, kind of where we came from, that they really uh, take their place at the table and, and not be dis yeah. intermediated by other organizations. I think there's opportunities to partner. There's a whole lot of activity with, with physicians now doing in-home care. Um, but ultimately, I believe home health has the opportunity to really partner and, and bring this wealth of knowledge for caring for people holistically in the home. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, it's time to really to step up and be recognized as a valuable partner. So just being cognizant of time here for a minute, um, just one more piece of uh, housekeeping here, if I could, is um, I think we have a uh, poll question that we want to bring up. So I think we'll do that at this point. And um, then we have just a couple minutes for a Q&A. So if we bring up the poll and you can just kind of respond to the poll for a minute and then um, we'll get back into it. I do see that there is one uh, question here, Sharon, that is for you that kind of goes back and talks about your staffing mm -hmm. and um, ask what, are there any specific training modules or resources that you use to provide training for your staff? Um, actually, Corstrata <laughs> provided that training. Um, we partnered with them and they provided the training um, for our staff. Uh, so that's, uh, so, so Joe, your team has um, that kind of program put together. Is there any other training? I mean, obviously you can talk a little bit about that training, but anything else that you recommend on, you know, the, um, your customer side that they do, or is that kind of an all-inclusive that you guys provide? So we have uh, we have training modules, really from basic wound healing, uh, again, helping agencies to feel more confident in identification of etiology um, or staging, to advanced modalities such as um, ostomy care, uh, or even palliative and hospice, which has, you know, a whole lot of, of variations within that. So really from basic to advanced wound, uh, wound training, including, and this is interesting, but the top wound diagnosis in home health is the diabetic foot ulcer. So we have a module on DFUs, uh, both on the prevention side, as well as uh, healing and and training on on healing, and that's where really um, having a multidisciplinary team is so important. Because, for instance, with DFU, if you can pull in a physical therapist or an occupational therapist for offloading, um, that's where I think home health has an amazing opportunity to address this huge problem of diabetic foot ulcers. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting. You actually talked something earlier, and um, it's um, one other quick thought because there's a question for me in here about uh, that, that ask about situs supporting. Um, you talked about diabetic foot ulcers and gaining um, 
getting information from the patients. And so there's a quick question on that. And so it is, yes, technology that can go directly to the, to the patient. So um, one of the things, and, and again, this is utilized by our, our, our partners, customers like, like Corstrata and by organizations directly, right? Where it's more and more important to be able to have that patient share. And you mentioned just the beginning participating in, in their care, right? And they're in that and, and they want to do that. And so we've seen it in different industries that, for instance, if you take it outside of wound care for a minute, but if you have CHF patients and you just want to know the status, um, a very quick kind of communication to just ask them simple questions about their health and did they gain weight or miss medications or are their ankles swollen and those kinds of things. So just to kind of address that question that came in about, you know, are there other, are there other utilizations of that? The answer is yes, um, there are, but in the context of today's conversation, it's, it's utilized in, you know, what Sharon and is working with Corstrata to do to, to reach out to that. So, um, so I think, um, you know, with that, I think we're going to get to a point where, uh, looking at time that we're going to wrap up a minute here. So I'm just going to put a, a slide back up on the board. I'm going to say thank you to, uh, to Sharon for her great insight about what her organization has gone through and to Joe as a, uh, as a partner of ours, a customer and partner of ours here at Citus to thank you both for your time and insight. If there's additional information that either of our organizations can provide to you, feel free to reach out to us at the information on the screen. Um, but Sharon, Joe, always great to talk with both of you. Thank you for your time today. We certainly appreciate it.